Hey guys, it's John, also known as Gimpanzee Tutorials. Today I'm going to be going over sound design with you guys. So, sound design is essential for video games. It doesn't matter what game you're designing or what you're doing, if you want the game to be good, you need sound. Now, there's two categories mainly in sound design, and this is the composition. So this would be the soundtrack of your game, and you also have the special effects. And this would be the things that make the game over the top, so picking up coins, buttons, stuff like that. So, creating a game, the composition, normally this is made by a composer, and it used to be that it was made only from an orchestra, so you'd only have string instruments to create the soundtracks of movies, mainly. But then this one guy named John Williams, who's the composer of all the music for Star Wars, a bunch of other amazing, like Indiana Jones, and a bunch of other popular movies, uh, he introduced the idea of having a band to play the music for movies, which then later video games. Now, most of the composition for composing video games is done online using different software. And I'll add the types of software later on another page. But your composition, this is mainly like piano, uh, drums, you know, just music, basically. Special effects, however, now, this would be like coin pickup. So, when you have your character picks up a coin or a power up, um, hitting, fighting, explosions, even movements in the game, like moving boxes or picking up weapons, uh, reloading, loading a gun, even stuff as simple as the menu. For example, clicking buttons, and closing menus, opening, stuff like that, it all ties into the game. Now, you also have background noise. And this is an entire category that I mainly use myself. And basically imagine you are smashing parts of the composition and a whole bunch of special effects together to create the game. So if you have, for example, a forest background and your game is mainly in the forest, you're going to want to have stuff like birds chirping, uh, wolves, maybe hunting, wind, streams, whoops, wind and streams, stuff like that to really make the atmosphere of the game. Now, <clears throat> A couple months ago, I was working on a game, a zombie type of game, with my team, which has now been disclosed. Um, and we had to break up, sadly, after a couple months of work. But one of the things that I introduced to the group was the idea of fear. Because to create the atmosphere of the game, you need all these different components, and you need to overlay them into the game and implement them until they make the game really outstanding and we were trying to make a groundbreaking game but we had to slow down and take a break from it anyways because I was in charge of fear uh, there were multiple things that I looked up and one of the things that I looked up was phobias and I'm going to show you on the next slide here so I researched the top 10 phobias and of these I found it was heights fear of enclosed spaces, claustrophobia. I um, also found that lots of people were scared of the dark, snakes, spiders, infection, thunder and lightning, and disease. So, I mean, that's pretty natural stuff that everyone has. Now, I was thinking of how could we implement this into the game, and which ones could we not implement. So, the ones that we can implement, we can pretty much implement all of these into the game. Now, heights, would be a little bit trickier because it'd be hard to put height into a game that is on the ground and there aren't really cliffs or anything.
but we figured we could do this by making traps. Claustrophobia. This could be done with really tight enclosed spaces. That one was easy. Maybe traps that trap the player in a cage or have other people in a cage and has to go through a dark house. Uh, fear of the dark, probably the most easiest one. However, to create fear of the dark, we didn't want to just create like a black light or no light at all because that would defeat the purpose. So our idea was to create flickering lights. And for example, the player utilizes a flashlight. So our idea was to have the flickering lights in different parts of the map and have the character's flashlight die every now and then not even on a timer we could have a fake timer that we put in so the character would think that it was still like half full of battery and then suddenly just die and freak the the player out also snakes and spiders uh... we figured we could just throw in a bunch of different uh... random animals and creatures in the map adding to the zombies in the game infection and disease now there are two different phobias. One of them is fear of needles and infection by needles, and the other one is fear of being diseased and like lepers and being the zombie. So the fear of infection, we figured we could do this by placing random needles around the na around the map and random like hospitals. So lots of stuff dealing with hospitals because people don't like going near infected people and hospitals and all that bad stuff and disease, we figured that if we could target several members of the group with random disease after eating certain things or interacting with the environment in a certain way, this would make the player more cautious and might even make the player turn on his own companions, thus harming him or her in the long run. And the last phobia was thunder and lightning. Now this is probably the easiest. All we did was throw in you know, clouds, lightning, stuff like that. Now another one we have is interrogation. Now I also looked up the top 11 interrogation techniques just to understand the fear of a human more. And most of the stuff is the same as phobias and it's isolation, sleep and sensory de deprivation, uh, stress, which I mean no duh, Sensory bombardment, so lots of lights, strobe lights, stuff like that. Extreme cold. Um, there's also some sexual stuff, which was like uh, mainly humiliation. And there was also, this is not on the list, but there was culture stuff, mainly just humiliation. Um, there's also phobias. And waterboarding, which I'm sure most of you have heard, have heard of. Now, <laughs> I also looked up... Uh, how bad waterboarding was. Basically what they do is they take someone and they wrap them in cellophane and rags around their face and put water on them so your mind is tricked into thinking you're drowning. And the average CIA agents lasted 14 seconds, which is not long. After we'd figured out how or what to implement into the game, we also had to narrow this down. So this is done with targeting things and then just listing examples. So, um, sleep, that would be an easy one. We'll just introduce the idea of fatigue, uh, sensory deprivation. This would be just basically having nothing, everything would be boring. And then suddenly, sensory bombardment. So, strobe lights, lightning. Tons of noise, chaotic stuff, really. Stress, stress positions, this would be making the character uncomfortable through having to have high stress stuff going on. So lots of monsters would be introduced and it would get progressively harder and harder. Extreme cold, also ties into the fatigue system. And the phobias. Now, phobias, we figured we'd add stuff like for example, um, howling, dogs, uh, moans, shrieks, monster sounds, um, dripping, dripping water was the main one that we put into the game. Mainly stuff that creates the atmosphere. 
Now, creating sounds. So, I'm not going to show you how to create your own music and composition. That'll be another tutorial. And there's tons of them on YouTube. But sound design, you have software for it. And this is like uh, Dark Wave Studios, Fruity Loops is for creating uh, video games, music actually, so ignore that one. Um, it's another one. BFXR. It's a runoff of a program called F. SFXR. Basically, what it allows you to do is make sound effects for your own game. And you can download it or just use the in browser. But there's all sorts of things you can do power ups, explosions, miss of the filters, a bunch of stuff. I'm going to do a tutorial on that later. Now, old school. Um, this is just grabbing a mic basically and recording everything and I mean like everything because you never know when you're gonna need a bunch of random stuff so the sound of like a stapler could make the sound of like a machine moving and attacking while the sound of like, a plastic wrapper that could be like the crinkling of a fire or something and you also you just have to create your own library basically of sounds and it should go by your own categorization. I mean, of course, it's good if you have everything in nice little folders and everything is all connected to something, but most of the sounds would just be so random and so, like, weird. I mean, just play around with it. Also, uh, Audacity. I forgot to add this. Now, that's the program that I'm using right now to record my voice actually and you can see it as it goes up and down but the this program audacity it has all sorts of different effects that you can use and you can create like phasers and laser beams and also telephones or morph voices so you could create like a Darth Vader voice there's tutorials to do that online or monsters or robotic voices using this program and it's free to download actually there's also other ones but they aren't free and it's useful for a bunch of stuff like Chewbacca's voice which originally created using a bunch of different sounds of animals and lions and seals and tigers a bunch of different stuff all thrown together and basically what the sound designer did was took them all and overlaid them and then brought some out a little bit more, brought some back, messed with the filters and everything, and created the sound of Chewbacca. So, I mean, just mess around with it. And, yep, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, guys.